Good morning. It is the first day of our week-long adventure going to the Rubicon. We were invited by Paul from Fab Rats. It is about 6.30 in the morning. We are heading out from our shop right now. We're going to be meeting Paul and the rest of the gang at Burl Junction, just kind of out in the middle of the desert there. So first stop is going to be fuel. But we're going to do that in Hamilton Fort, and we are on our way. All right, so we're headed down the road. You can see we're loaded pretty heavy. We've got everything we need to take care of a family of six for a week of camping. A couple of motel rooms sprinkled in. Okay, so here's the plan. Rudy went on a road trip a week ago, and he's gonna be meeting us in Ely, Nevada. We have friends there that we can leave a vehicle at, so Jamie's driving her car, and that's when we're gonna put all the gear uh, split the gear between the Morver and Rudy's Jeep and then continue on over to Tahoe. So figure about 10 or 11 hours of driving today. Well, there it is. We're putting gas in it the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> oh. All right. Instead of all that other way we used to do. Oh, I see what's happening. Maybe I need to go down like this. No. Okay, we're gonna go get some breakfast and then we're gonna hit the road again and meet to meet the rest of the gang at Burl Junction. So we're here at the rendezvous point and Paul and Michelle are not here, which is uncharacteristic for Paul, but possibly characteristic for Michelle. Have you heard from Paul? Not, not today. I've been trying to call I both of we them the for the last here. hour. We have to film everything. I thought Wonder you might have broke down. Well, yeah, we're going jeeping. Okay, who's leader of this outfit? You want to set the pace? You can. We'll cruise behind you. I don't have a speedometer, so. All right. It works sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't work. My fuel gauge works sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't, so. All right. Sounding more and more like a Jeep. We're about to head off. Right here, this is the group. I started waiting really before it for got to me. <laughs> They're made for and then we're picking up Rudy in uh, next stop, and I think we're getting ready to head on out. Driving impressions, it drives really nice. Like you could qualify that and say it drives really nice for a homemade off-road vehicle with 40 inch tires. But it really is a nice ride. It's nice to drive. We're a couple hours into this. We got a lot of hours to go. So we're here at the ranch, the cattle ranch, to meet Rudy. Howdy. Well, lucky there. You got a lot of hair on your head. Yeah, I know I do. It grows. The plan is to get all the gear out of Jamie's car into Rudy's Jeep and whatever won't fit there, we'll cram in the more air. Okay, everybody's loaded up. We're headed to the gas station to fuel up because dun dun dun. We must be getting terrible fuel mileage. I promised you adventure, right Jamie? Yeah, right. <laughs> Nothing new to me. Anyway, I might uh, I might need to be towed into Ely. I'm just gonna keep a, a steady pedal here at 67 miles an hour. All right, everybody's in trouble. Everybody's in trouble. Whoa! Well, what's up, Carter? We're out of gas. 
We're out, we're out of gas. gas. We're after pull. How'd you run out of gas? Why didn't you say you needed some? There's, there was gas at the ranch. Well, I didn't know we needed some. Can't believe you ran out of gas. Where's Paul? He pulled over back there. He's out he of gas, too. Gas, then. And Brad's what? about out of gas, Everybody's too. out of gas. Do we have gas tanks? No. I've got a cooler. <laughs> you have a bag? <laughs> Everybody okay? I'm just have Rudy hook up to me and pull me out. Okay. I don't have any gear. You do. I brought my gear. <laughs> Are we ever gonna get there? No. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Follow me. See you at the gas station. <laughs> well, it's supposed to be the other way around, wasn't it? <laughs> Talk about the drive of shame. <laughs> We've got about eight miles. Oh, man. I'd like to be able to tell you that I'm usually not this irresponsible. But when I'm on vacation, you never know what you're going to get. So, this is the third time I've ran out of fuel. And what makes it even more ridiculous is the first two times I didn't have a working fuel gauge. Or a good way to put gas in. This time I've got both. And I still ran out. Because I miscalculated some distances. I didn't factor in the leg of going down to pick up Rudy and drop off Jamie's car and coming back. So that was an extra 40 miles. He's chef. He's Catered? The chef. He's the chef, I'm the sous chef so, apparently. Yeah. So what kind of mileage were you getting? I got 11.5. I don't know, the fuel gauge is faster than the RPM gauge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now that we have our base fuel mileage for driving on the highway of 11 and a half miles to the gallon, we are plotting our next fuel stop in a shorter interval. And that way that should give us plenty of fuel in case something happens and we won't roll into town on fumes again. This is what it's like driving across Nevada. You drive across a super straight road, looks like it just drives straight into a mountain. And you just do that about 20 times and it'll be across the state of Nevada. We're here at the Walmart in Fallon, Nevada. Um, we're just getting some supplies. Anyway, I don't know where Paul is. Or Brad for that matter. <laughs> we know, we actually do know where Brad is. Oh. Brad's having some sort of fueling problem, like a bad fuel pump that's going out or he's got a filter that's being, that's plugged. He told us just go ahead, um, get all this stuff done, and then when he gets here, we'll figure out what uh, what's going on with that, get some parts, see if we can get him back up on the road. So we got the goods, and we got the bads. There's the bads. Brad's been losing the fuel pump all day long. <laughs> this thing's gonna run so much better. It was like 60, 50, 40. Just dying. All right, well. This is what we're gonna be doing for the next little bit. We'll let you know how it turns out. So after what, three or four hours of messing yeah. around, we finally got the Jeep fixed. We messed with coil packs, spark plugs, cam sensor. Um, intake manifold. Intake manifold. The whole Jeep. So we are on the road, I think, and we're gonna be able to do this final two hours yeah. to the place. See you there. Good morning. It is day two of the Rubicon trip, and we are in South Tahoe, I think is the designation. We're going to load up, grab some breakfast, and then we're going to be meeting Paul and the rest of them at the trailhead or somewhere else. So we just got pulled over and they just wanted to say hi and shake her hand. Like full on cut off cars, yeah, like, like the officer. Like, pull over, yeah, pull he over, cut like, me off and saying? another car tell. off to get to him. Well, we got yelled at by a cop is all we got today. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're like, we're blocking the intersection. 
because we were stopped and he's like this is not somewhere to park all right so jd's leaving his truck and trailer right here here's our tour guide here because he's the only one that's been across here yet i'll see who i can get stuck and where right. we're going to we're going to make it to buck island today it's nice. probably gonna be a eight hour drive to the rocks this thing's running good now oh yeah it feels like your V8. five hours of shop time yesterday did it <laughs> yeah all we needed was a pry bar and some tools. <laughs> all right we're heading out We're about Buckle to. Buckle up, kids. Why? About to get crazy. You are in so much trouble. I think I'll be fine. I'll be fine. What kind of locker do you have in the front? Um, so about that, I left the locker at home. Yeah, so he's running an open diff in the front and a factory pause attraction in the rear. Oh, we're not even a mile into this yet, and uh, we are at a standstill. So I picked a bad line and I'm in a bad spot. Looks like you just pinched the... Oh, it's right there. Oh, yeah. Pull, push, Colin. <sighs> I'm, uh, I would, I'm too narrow for, for that obstacle. It would, like, pop me out one way and the other, and one time it just came down. That's why I'm bent. All right, so we finally made it to camp here. We're just 
really close to Buck Island Lake. I guess it's a popular stopping point. JD and Michelle are getting dinner ready. Let's cook in here, bacon. Cook bacon and then a little more bacon and then we'll add some bacon to it and it'll be perfect. Oh yeah, there's yep. bears. Yeah. There's, there's bears. I, bears. I hear they really like peanut butter and Kool-Aid. Michelle, you smell like peanut butter and Kool-Aid. You're in you're in big trouble. Never, I've actually never seen one in real never life. Seen one. But I've watched the great outdoors and I've seen some significant amount of bear what would you call now, wait a it? Killings? Yeah. You're on TV. You're and that's worried about for me. Stuff that you've seen in the movies. Yes. Oh yeah, because the movies are always and YouTube videos. They're always no true to life, right? Yeah, yes. that's what I thought. Yes. Well, it is day three on the Rubicon Trail. Wait, wait, it's day three on our trip. Day two on the Rubicon Trail. Good thing we cleared that up. Yeah. JD came through again. Delicious burrito. He calls it the heart attack. Worst yeah. sleep of my life. So I slept pretty good. Yeah, you did. No one else. We all heard you. <laughs> a couple other people slept pretty good, but some some people had the worst sleep of their life. Yes, it was bad. We need a damage report. So Rudy, mm. what do you got to fix on your Jeep before we get heading again? Nothing. I just have to fill up my power steering reservoir. All right. He's leaking fluid bad. So we've got to fix the leaf spring. Broke the eye off the leaf spring. Check it over. I think that's our only real damage. That's the only known damage that needs to be fixed before we leave. Mm -hmm. Anything on the Yoda that can be fixed? I haven't looked at it super close, but I don't think so. I'm going to tighten some bolts up, I think. What do we got on your Jeep? Um, after the full rebuild on the way up here, Good. I've got to add some more differential fluid from the axle still puking. I but the full it. rebuild we did is fresh. Yeah, it's a fresh Jeep, ready to go. Let what me... you setting up? My welder, I gotta turn around though. I don't think my leads are gonna reach. And there it is. Trail fix. Fixed. What's your impressions on the Rubicon Trail having this been your first trip across it? Um, it's because there's less mosquitoes rough, up there too. It's rougher than I anticipated, but like difficulty level is, I wanna say like average. Okay. If, you're, if you're any kind of a wheelman at all, or wheel woman. If you're any kind of a wheel person, you're gonna, you're not gonna flop. You, there, the chance of bashing in your differential or bending a tie rod, that's where the danger is.
I'm going to drop the front diff into there. It's not, it's not, it's not, bad. It's not horrible bad. It's all right. There. All right. Okay. Now a little. Just cut off straight. I was gentle to the point with my legs. Passenger and roll around. You got it. You're good on this side. All right, so that was an ordeal. JD and Trace, and I think Trace was driving, they got wedged up in there, snapped an axle. One of their outer stubs is broke. So they're in three wheel drive. At least they've got a a good solid locker, ARB in the front. We're gonna head on down. So we're here at Rubicon Springs. We're gonna be spending the night. Kind of taking it easy today. That was a lot of hard trail though. It was a little bit of a lot of hard. I'm going swimming. This ain't gonna happen. There's no way. There's no way. I'll wash my feet and we'll be done. You need to wash your neck really bad. I love when you're gonna die. No, you deserve that. You deserve that. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Brad can't get out. Just go. Do it. No, Do I tried. Michelle. It. Matt, go under. I'm trying. You're not trying very hard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Throw me that soap. Wait. All right, turn off the cameras. This is obscene. <laughs> it's a fire. Oh, his nose. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. It is day three on the Rubicon Trail, day four for this trip. We decided to sleep out under the stars last night. Good morning, Jamie. So it's a little bit later, everybody's up, a little more bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. Mm, that's so. Define bright-eyed. <laughs> JD's down there cooking breakfast. We're kind of breaking camp. Told you breakfast was next. What are you eating there? Pancakes and sausage. And I'm eating a sausage taco. It's a lovely day. We saw it. We saw a bear. Michelle, are you okay? Because there's a bear. <laughs> I'm doing okay. He was moving. 
And uh, I'd like to note these are a lot, he's a lot bigger than I was expecting. Um, the bears we have around us that live in the Kolob and Cedar Mountain area, East Zion, they're a lot smaller. So Michelle, I need your honest answer here. If we'd have spotted that bear last night, would it have been different? Yes, but it was far enough away that I feel safe that, that we could have made enough noise that it wouldn't come into camp. What I just about need you, to Jamie? Get my would sticks. you have slept outside if you'd have saw that bear last night? Sure. I wasn't worried. All right, so we have just broke camp and we're headed back on the trail. Yeah, we're going to climb Cadillac Hill. That's the next thing. Where? Cad Cadillac Hill. That's our next stop. Like obstacle. We're going to stop at the top and get some pictures at Observation Point. Obstacle. The whole hill is kind of an obstacle. Is this the first Corvair across the Rubicon Trail? Comment your answers. I'd like to. And if anybody knows of any Corvairs that have gone on the Rubicon Trail, I'd love to hear that story. There were three Corvairs that they took from North America to South America across the Darien Gap. They drove from Detroit to somewhere, Brazil or something. And two of the three Corvairs made it. That was the first vehicle to actually go from North to South America. Me and Rudy noticed that the shock came off. It's been a while, but I didn't think anything of it. I always thought you were just parked at a weird angle. Is JD having trouble? No, he's got it. I wonder if the shock's any good still. It just unscrewed that. Wow. Uh -huh. That's incredible. So we're here at Observation Point. We parked our rigs there to get a nice photo. With, this is basically, oh, I guess this is the top of Cadillac Hill. And everybody missed the Cadillac but Jace. So I'm gonna have to go do some research. Jace is going with the eyes, I guess. You can't use that, we'll have the same video. So go over to Michelle's channel to find <laughs> out about the Cadillac and Cadillac Hill. There. See if that works. Well, I think you're right. I think we should just get to town. That way we're working on everything at once. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. So that was the plan. That's the plan. We're gonna bounce out of here, pun intended. How many years? Next year? Next year. Tell us about the ride home. It's going to be 102 degrees. 10 hours. And we have no AC. So our group kind of got broke up. Paul and Brad went on the 80 and we decided to take a more scenic route. So we got us and Rudy. And then the other two are on the 80. We'll see who makes it to Fallon. Is that where we're going to meet? We're going to actually meet up west of Fallon. Oh. Or east, east of Fallon. See who gets the there paper. first. So here we are in Virginia City. It's an old mining town. They have a museum here. I'm wondering if we have time to stop and look around. This is wow. cool. It's all built up on the hill. As most mining towns are. Okay, this is going to be a quick museum trip. All right, so that concludes our lightning quick tour of the Way It Was Museum in Virginia City. Matt is gonna make indulging me have indulging me and letting us drive down the main street because it just looks super awesome. And we're probably gonna get left, but it's okay. When this, when this town was designed by the founding fathers of whoever designed it. It was not designed for tourist traffic and it's a tight squeeze. It is awesome. I got a winch if you need it. There we go. What's that? Oh I'll show you. I do this I do this for a living. 
So this is a, ra a railroad yard, yeah, a, a rail yard. And so this is where they were getting supplies in and and ore out this for the mines. Yeah. yeah. Look at the size of that. Oh, I'll engineer be sits over here. The fireman sits over there. And I'll pull you up. Neat stuff. Holy crap. So they used to fill all this with this water, one, right? I guess the bottom one is. The bottom one's the dry. So they would fill this all with water, right? That water gets converted to steam by some sort of heat source. And now they're fueling it off of fuel oil or it's back here drain this. oil. That's this is the oil tank. Panama Expedition 1916. That's this engine's claim to flame. Came to f something. <laughs> Claim to fame. We are super excited right now because we have some raindrops coming down and a little bit of cloud cover and it is giving us some much needed relief from this super, super warm drive home. I get to try out my wiper. Home today. <laughs> well, we are here in Eureka. We caught up with Paul and Brad. This is what it looks like when our bellies are full and we've got five more hours of driving to do. So, Paul's got a little bit of a driveline vibration from a slightly tweaked drive shaft it happened on the trail. So he's going to set the pace. We're just going to try to keep up. You're going to try to keep up with Paul. As long as it's more downhill than uphill. Yes. Rudy's going to impatiently ride your bumper. Yeah. I don't impatiently ride. And then I'm going to I'm going to clean up and then I'll radio ahead uh, when I run out of fuel and you guys come back and get me. This is the last fuel up as a group. Paul's going to be heading out. We've got to pick up Jamie's car. It's been a fantastic trip. We all stink. I want to do this again. Thanks for watching. <laughs>